everyone. I'm Jan Coldwell. And I'm David Paulson. Welcome to The Complete Rider. So Dave, I guess you never know where The Complete Rider cameras are going to take you. You really don't, Jan. Recently, we went behind the walls of the California Correctional Center to take a look at a horse training program that's making a difference. The open grass ranges of California. Herds of wild horses running out, running free. There are more than 43,000 head of wild horses roaming the public lands of the western United States. But for some of these horses, the days of living far from contact with human beings are about to end. The Bureau of Land Management is staging one of its periodic roundups, culling the herd in order to keep the numbers manageable. The horses are gathered and placed in holding pens where the selection process will begin. When that process is completed, a chosen few of the wild horses will embark on a journey. It's a journey that will take them to prison. We often use the term renegade to refer to that individual who acts in ways that fall outside the rules of society. Horses are sometimes branded as renegades too because they, like humans, may conduct themselves in ways that simply aren't the norm. So what happens when we combine the two, human and horse renegades? Well, here at the California Correctional Center in Susanville, California, that's exactly what happens. Inmates part of the institution's vocational horse training program are paired with wild range horses that have been rounded up by the Federal Bureau of Land Management. The result is a walk on the wild side. At 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, Tom Chinoweth, former rodeo cowboy, now vocational horse program coordinator, gathers his charges at the lockup units and walks them to the modern functional horse ranch just south of the prison walls. Well, I feel like I have the best job in the state of California uh, because I have such a unique program and the program is run uniquely. I don't have the same uh, rules that apply to the people inside the walls. Things are a lot more lax out here. We all work together. There's no, no COs, which we get tired of seeing them every day. <laughs> The fact that we have all this freedom and no COs, and Tom's never had a problem out here, that sort of tells you something about, uh, you know, giving us, you know, uh, that little bit of freedom, that little bit of trust, what we can do with it. So it works both ways. It's something we appreciate, so we don't mess it up. We don't do nothing to mess it up. And not just this group, but every group that's ever been out here. If you're willing to want to learn something, between Tom and these horses out here, they're, they're the best teachers. You know, we come out here and people are real. You know, you gotta be real with these horses. You can't fool them. It really promotes a camaraderie, especially interracial. That's, that's always very tense among prison population. And out here, they kind of drop that race card. They don't play it as much out here. The people kind of, Okay, for six and a half hours a day, instead of an inmate, I'm a student, and seem to really buy into that. It's all so fast when exactly. he started, Bucky almost just threw me over here. And the, the biggest reason all that happened to you yesterday is you didn't have control of the horse's mind. The administration is very proud of this program. It's unique. It's unique in California. It's unique across the country. Here they're trying to take a wild animal, make that animal want to do what the trainer is trying to get them to do, the trainer being the inmate. When the horses arrive, each man chooses the one he will work with. First choice goes to Ray Brackett, a program veteran who, because of his seniority and the respect he commands from the others, has been given the job of lead man, a kind of ranch foreman. Well, I kind of go around help everybody out if they need help and stuff. Work with the horses, 
do stuff around here. Plus, I get first pick of the horses when they come in, so. <laughs> He's chosen a big gelding named Whiskey. The men name their horses, and the names sound like what the inmates themselves might be called. There's Shorty, Jake, Red Dog, and Scarface. Call him Shorty because he's short. <laughs> Red Dog, because in prison, your homeboys are your good friend. You call him Dog, and I consider him a good friend, so I call him Red Dog. The original name that I named him was Drop Top, and the reason why I named him that is that, as you can see here, this fence right here, you know, that he just T-boned the fence. We had some guys out here that really hadn't been in the program long, so therefore they weren't consciously aware of the pressure that you put on a horse. In response to that, he severed his head. I mean, he split it wide open, and they put him back on the trailer, took him back out there to BLM. And uh, the doctor out there seen him, you know, they stitched him up. And he's a very tough horse, so he's adopted the name Scarface. There's more to this program than just getting on and going for a wild ride. The men learn every aspect of horse care and management, and the day starts much like the day on any horse facility. Horses are fed, pens are cleaned, and then it's time for the day's lesson in what Tom Chenoweth calls limited resistance training. What we're trying to do here is teach these horses that the right thing to do is what we really want them to do, but pretty A lot of people teaching this resistance-free training, and there's a lot of trainers out there that teach it. Basically, I try to teach people to make it clear for the horse what it is you want, and give the horse the opportunity to work with you, to respond. Now don't tell that boy good boy for kicking at you like that. Quit praising him on bad stuff. Just as importantly, they listen to the horse when the horse tries to communicate with them that, hey, I'm having a problem here. I'm not quite sure what it is you want. We hear that, we make it very plain for the horse to understand. And pretty soon when we do that, we gain the horse's trust and uh, it becomes a, it's a snowball effect. The horse starts working with us, and the training becomes very easy. Ron Ferreter, a 30-year veteran of the penal system, is working with a wild-eyed Palomino. He's trying to make that first step in removing the barrier that stands between man and horse. What we're trying to do is get them joined up with, you know, mentally and physically too, but mentally mostly. I, I turn them around one direction, and he knows that I'm in control because I'm, I'm putting that pressure on the, behind him. And I try to get him to turn the way I want him to turn. Once we practice uh, getting him turned and, and, and letting them know that we're in control of him, it's like we're the do dominant horse. And then uh, he understands and, and uh, after running around a while in both directions, he kind of wants to join up, find out what, what's going on. And, and then, uh, then we'll teach him to square up and look, look at it straight pretty well explained to the horse. All you gotta do is give me a little effort here and I'll reward that. And the only reward that horse gets is that we take the pressure off, turn our back on him, see? And pretty soon the horse gets to thinking, well, is that all it took to get along with you guys? Excellent, excellent. A lot of us end up here, we don't feel real good about ourselves all the time. But uh, when you come out here and you you find that uh, you can get a horse, a wild horse like this, who was threatening and didn't want nothing to do with people, and all of a sudden he's responding to you, kind of makes you feel pretty good, like you're, you're maybe worth something. The program isn't just about what the horses learn. The men are learning too. And the main lesson, it seems, is patience. In this program, an inmate has got to have patience like you wouldn't believe, something that he probably has not had, and that's 
the sort of thing that's got him into trouble in the first place and brought him to prison. He's got to learn patience. Uh, he's got to learn gentleness with these animals. You can't take a 1,200-pound animal and make it do what you want it to do immediately. It just doesn't work that way. There you go. Good job, Vern. Good job. Don't forget now to reinforce things with that woe and whatnot. As soon as you said the word woe, that horse came back under control, if you noticed. Now he's starting to put his head down and chew a little, and that's a good sign. Those are signs we're looking for. When a horse puts his head down and chews like that, basically, to me, they're saying, all right, I can handle this. I understand what we're doing here, and I don't have a problem with it. That word patience comes up a lot. It's one of the lessons that needs to be learned by both the men and the horses. Patience, and, uh, and I guess a little bit of humility, too. Um, I guess that's what gets a lot of us in here is our, our, our pride and our impatience. So that's kind of what's good for me. And a lot of people come out here and they expect just to start working with a horse and he's going to come around. They come around, you ask them, and they'll come around at their own pace. But they'll let you know when, hey, you can pet me. And they'll let you know when, hey, you can put the blanket on me. And they'll, they'll pretty much tell you, like Tom was saying. You talk to them and they'll talk back. Quit it. Dealing with these horses, they don't give you the response that you want right off, you know? So that you take a little time and you think about it, you know? and it helps you a lot. I mean, they're just, they're not like a gentle horse sometimes. They take off, and you never know when they're gonna stop. I've seen them almost run through these gates sometimes. It's kind of scary. boss teaches us that uh, what they're all about is they're all about God made them to run and get away, to escape. If they can't escape, if they're cornered, they will attack. So this one here, he was, um, he found, if he found he couldn't get away, his tendency was to want to attack, you know, run you off, get him, uh, you, uh, you couldn't lead, lean on his pen without him kind of giving you, you little faint charges to get you off his pen. And uh, so he was, uh, I'd say he was threatening. <laughs> that was his personality. Whoa. Whoa. These horses here, when they first come, that their first instinct is to defend themselves. You know, that's, that's all they know, is I got to defend myself, which is the same way with some of us when, they, you know, when we come through these prison walls. But once they're here for a while, you know, they say, all right, these guys aren't all that bad. These guys aren't all that bad. I can deal with them. A lot of us end up here, don't, we don't feel real good about ourselves all the time. But uh, when you come out here and you, and you find that uh, you can get a horse, a wild horse like this who was threatening and didn't want nothing to do with people, and all of a sudden he's responding to you, kind of makes you feel pretty good, like you're, you're maybe worth something. You know, it's, uh, relationships have been hard. They've come hard with me, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of nice to have a, a, another a living creature respond to you. At day's end, the renegade men and the renegade horses are both back behind bars. Until tomorrow, when the barriers will be off in the distance, and men and horses, well, they'll just try to get along.
being an athletic horse, I checked his legs, I checked um, for lameness or anything, and he is not lame, there's no, no problems there. So I did an acupuncture diagnostic exam, and we found that Chex is very sore through the sacral iliac and hips. And being a reining horse, that when they're asked to stop, there's a lot of stress in that area. And it's just like a human with a lower back problem, and uh, that's where their weak point is. And so we're working with Chex to try and strengthen those muscles and get them repaired and get them back to where he can go back to doing the reining and sliding stops without any problems. So right back here, you've got some quivering. Yes. And if I go ahead and push on his hips. Oh, wow. And that's very, I, I don't push hard mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I, I am, oh. that's Is it. Is that right? Yes. A little handshake. Actually, what we're going to do is called electroacupuncture, and we use this unit, and it, what it will do, it's a battery-operated unit that sends electrical impulses through the needles, and it stimulates the acupoints that I've inserted the needles in. Okay, okay. so we'll just hook these up, and then we turn it on. Will we be able to see? Oh, is it on? <laughs> it is, but we're, I'm just turning it up slowly, and what we'll see is... As I gradually turn it up, you'll see the needles start to, to move. Most horses, they'll get sedate. They'll fall asleep while this is happening. It's very relaxing to a lot of them. And we just let them hang out and relax and enjoy. Now that we've had the electroacupuncture unit on for, for about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. then I um, remove it, turn it off, and then remove the needles, and that completes our treatment. Well, Dr. Silver, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. It was fun. It, it was fun and absolutely informative and amazing. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Today's question comes to us from Femka, and you'll see her here with our expert, Gail Greeno. Femka's from Red Deer, Alberta. She's always wondering why her instructor tells her to, well, let's hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Gail, why do I always have to keep my heels down? Well, Femka, you have to keep your heels down so that you have an anchor to your pony so you don't fall off at the jumps. And not only that, but there should be equal weight across the ball of your foot. If there's too much weight on one side, your toe turns out too much. If there's too much weight on the other side, you can't get your foot on your horse. So it's important to keep equal weight with your heel down. And now we're going to go practice it over a jump. When Femka goes to lean forward to go over the jump, she must keep her heel down so that it keeps her leg on the pony. Good, Femka. The perfect example of what not to do off the ground to the jump. If your heel draws up, your upper body can shoot too far forward. If your pony or horse stops, you can be the first one at the scene of the accident. See you next week. It'll be another great show. We'll see you then.